right. Only judges in tax is really supportive. They're not only expert in their field, but they also really care about what you are doing. So it's really beneficial to join Tech Panther if you are an early stage startup. To everyone thinking about joining Tech Planter, I think my advice would Right, so there you have it, everyone. So that was our video containing a few messages from our alumni from Tech Planter. And uh, just to officially start this session, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So it's already past uh, 2 p.m. GMT plus 8, and I am your MC for today. My name is Zev. So uh, let me just start by sharing my screen. All right. So again, let me welcome everyone. My well, my slides are loading. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. So again, uh, welcome everyone to all our participants for our information session today about Tech Planter ASEAN. So uh, I guess uh, more or less everyone is involved here in some sort of deep technology, or maybe a researcher or a startup uh, themselves. And I hope that you have uh, a lot of interest in uh, our initiative called Tech Planter, which is why I guess you're here today. And again, I'm your MC for today. My name is Yev. So um, my academic background is that I have a bachelor's in chemistry and then I have a master's and PhD in the pharmaceutical sciences. So um, I'm also currently uh, a member of Levenes Japan since 2020. And uh, upon establishment of our Philippine office, I was assigned as the first managing director. So if you have any like questions about pharmaceutical sciences or like pharmacology is, was my main research uh, when I was a graduate student. So please don't hesitate to ask. And um, just to give everyone a back uh, a run through of what we are going to be talking about today. So uh, the whole program will be from uh, 2 p.m. Uh, GMT plus 8 until 3.30. So that's a total of two and a half hours. Oh, wait, sorry. That's one and a half. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, we will be starting, of course, for those who have just heard of us, um, we will be starting with an introduction for, about the Levenis group. And then I guess more or less uh, after that, so since one of our initiatives, we do have a lot of initiatives in our company, uh, we will be explaining about Tech Planter. And then uh, we will also have a short talk from Mr. Daiji Komoto of Real Tech Holdings. So Real Tech Holdings is one of our group companies that is involved in supporting financially and business-wise all our startups that in our system. So they're our venture capital arm. And then this will also be followed by a 40-minute panel session uh, regarding uh, opportunities for ASEAN deep tech startups within and beyond the ASEAN region. So um, in this session, we will actually be having three presentations from our esteemed uh, Tech Planter alumni, which is Carbotech from Malaysia, Redream from Thailand, and Crest from Singapore. And this will also be followed by a another short panel discussion moderated by our very own Managing Director of Liga Singapore, which, uh, Dr. Kihoko Tope. And after that, um, everyone is free to actually ask questions all throughout the session if uh, needed, but we also have a special session after this to uh, answer your queries for around 20 minutes. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, uh, as I mentioned, we will be starting with a short introduction about the Levenas Group by uh, our one of our esteemed uh, heads as well, from Mr. Hakim. Uh, can I give it to you then? Okay, all right. Thank you very much, uh, yeah, for the facilitation. Okay. Hi and good afternoon, everyone. We welcome you to join our first step plan, the ASEAN 2022 uh seminar for today so before we go with the tap planter program let me introduce a bit about our company because i think a lot of us may be coming today for the first time to join the Venice program so it's good for us to introduce a bit about our company before i introduce about company let me introduce a bit about myself same as Jeff. so my name is hakim i'm currently the managing director of the Venice malaysia Srambahat. my background basically in the electronic system engineering where previously during my study, I involved a lot with uh, different kind of activities, including robotics. But uh, besides engineering, I have also have passion in business development. I have been involved in different kind of business, even during my study as well. And that's why when I joined Libonest, I create my own mission, which is to nurture the technopreneurs and also support different kind of meaningful technologies into the society. Because I believe today we have a lot of the issues happening in the society. And we also have a lot of good technologies in the university. So this is why we actually we want to bridge this technology to be a good solution into the society. Right. So enough about me. Let me introduce about our company, Divines. So next slide. So Divines basically is a group of what I call very interesting people inside this. 
we are coming from different kind of background from engineering life sciences business psychologists and so on but what actually unite us in this company is the same vision that we have which is advancing science and technology for global happiness so what we do actually under this vision is we are manufacturing the useful knowledge uh, next slide yes son. we are manufacturing the useful knowledge and solution to solve different kind of local and global challenges all right so this is our big vision and what we would like to achieve in the end so next one so just to share with you how the business started in the beginning all right so we just uh, we started back in 2002 as an education company where during that time japan actually faced three main issues okay the first one is related to the science education among the young generation in Japan during that time. So the same problem also we are facing right now in Southeast Asia, especially in Malaysia currently. The second problem is related to the job opportunity, especially for the graduates in Japan during that time, where the government produced a lot of PhD holders, but they didn't prepare enough job opportunity in the market. And last but not least, this is the most important part, where there's also issues on commercializing the technology research from the, the university into the society. Also the big problem that we are facing right now, especially in Malaysia and maybe other countries as well. So this is where actually the business started in the beginning and we continue to develop our business into different kind of areas as well. So next one. So to bring different kind of solution into the society, we train ourselves to become a science bridge communicator. Maybe you have heard about science communicator where they try to make it the science term to be easy to understand for young generation to learn about science. But as a science bridge communicator, we are not only communicate about science. We try to bridge different kind of knowledge, experience, needs in order for us to create new business and solutions for the world. All right. So next one. This is current overview of our company, our HQ we have in Tokyo and also another offices in Osaka. We also have subsidiaries in different countries, including Singapore, Malaysia, UK, US, and recently actually we established the Livinas Philippines as well. Most of the members of Livinas coming from masters and also PhD graduates. That's why we can also do different kind of research as uh, in our background. And in our companies, we have different kind of entities as well. We have research institute, uh, venture capitals, manufacturers, and also different kind of startup that we're actually supporting them in our group of companies. All right. So next one. So in overall, we try to create an ecosystem for science and technology to be developed from the beginning into the education, talent development, R&D, as well as to accelerate maybe the implementation of this meaningful technology into the society. So that's where today actually we would like to talk further about our Tech Planter program. And we would like you to invite, uh, if you are from researchers, start up to join our program today. All right. So next one. We are working with major companies in Japan. So we in different kind of projects. Uh, in education, talents, and also in tech planter as well. Later on, Michael son will explain who are the partners who actually we bring into our tech planter program that you have the opportunity to meet with them. All right. And last but not least, in our company, uh, next one, we produce a lot of unique projects. And this project actually been developed based on the individual, individual passion that we have. For example, me into the engineering and business, right? So I create also different kind of program related to my patient. Same with Yev and also my cousin. Each of us has something that we want to pursue, but we are united with our main vision that we have together. And to create this project, we have actually go through different kind of training, including we have a unique cycle that we call the QPMI cycle that I would like to share with you today. All right, next one. So. If you are from in the industry, maybe you are familiar with different kind of process to maybe improve your product. But as researchers, you always come out with something from the deep issues or question that you have. So it's always started with the quality question. What we want to solve actually, either in the industry or either in the society. So once you identify the question that you want to uh, maybe proceed with, that's where you actually develop your internal patient or personal patient. But it's not enough. You need to gather the right members or partners for you to maybe uh, 
uh, share your vision, share your question and passion, so they can also be involved in the mission together with you. So that's why when you have all these three components, you can actually deliver the solutions that you want into the society, or maybe create new exciting things as well. And if it goes wrong, you can always repeat the cycle uh, time by time to maybe improve your solutions, right? And today, next one, we would like to share Tech Planter. This is a platform for you to share about your question and passion in order to gather the right members, right partners, either from the industry, the venture capitals, so you can actually implement your innovation to solve the issues in the society, all right? So to talk more about our Tech Planter program, I would like maybe to pass this session to Michael San. Over to you, Michael. Hi, thank you, Hakim. So from my end, let me actually go into uh, explaining a little bit more about the Tech Planter program, uh, which is one of the activities we do as Levenes as well. But before that, let me give a brief introduction about myself. So my name is Michael from Levenes. Um, I'm actually based in Singapore, and I'm also actually looking over Levenes UK as well. Uh, next slide. So within the Levenes, I have been involved in several kinds of projects, uh, which involves in supporting startup, especially ASEAN startups prototyping needs by connecting to uh, small, medium sized manufacturers in Japan, as well as I have been involved in uh, creating, uh, conducting these tech planter programs across the world. Uh, not only in just one country, but several countries. And also I'm being involved in a project uh, which helps to uh, support Singaporean startup to actually expand to Japan market in collaboration with Singaporean government. So uh, I've been working quite a lot in helping out startups to create, connect to diff, uh, different ecosystem, basically. Um, so with further more ado, uh, let's go into the details of Tech Planter. So Tech Planter is a deep tech uh, startups platform or for researchers or entrepreneurs who, who is actually working on deep tech. And I think as Hakim was explaining, it's basically a platform to support for those who's working on these kind of deep tech and trying to turn this QPMI cycle themselves as well. Next slide, please. Yeah, so um, it actually started uh, in 2014, and it actually started as a seed acceleration program to support early stage startups or academia who wants to actually uh, commercialize their own research seeds into society. And now we actually evolved our platform, uh, our tech planter program into actually a platform to actually solve the real deep issue that lies in Southeast Asia in using the deep technology as well. Uh, and I'll be explaining about it in a little bit in more details. Next slide. So we basically try to create a, a, a ecosystem for the, these deep tech startups by having uh, different kind of communities uh, joining into this uh, ecosystem. For example, uh, industries, large corporates, governments, university incubators, as well as players like uh, manufacturers, which we call as super factories as well as there could be people like VCs, uh, as well as um, IP strategists as well. And as I, as Hakim was saying, Libanes members are here as a science bridge communicator to connect these different players towards uh, these deep tech startups to help them to accelerate their technology to be developed and hence implemented to society and solving the global issues together, all together as one team. So next, next slide again. So in order to do this, we have been developing our partners across Southeast Asia, as well as in Japan as well. And as you can see, these are the, some of our partners within Southeast Asia. We work with key universities, incubators, accelerators, government agency. We work with these local partners closely to, in order to support each of the startups from these ASEAN countries. And if you can go to the next slide, we can also take a look at some of our corporate partners as well. Um, majority of them are MNCs from Japan and uh, tech companies with lots of different kinds of technologies as well, as well as different kinds of infrastructure that they might be able to collaborate with each of you and try to create 
uh, a new business or new project together with you as well. So uh, by joining into Tech Planters, for some of the startups, you might be able to find uh, new partners like these companies or the local partners that I've actually shown in the previous slide to actually push your stage to the next level. Uh, next slide, please. So having said that, since 2014, we have been working on these activities and then uh, up to last year in 2021, we have accumulated uh, around 19, 948 teams. So there are quite a lot of um, uh, communities of deep tech startup around us now, and then maybe collaboration between each other, each startups is all might be also uh, interesting as well. And that's something that we can also support as well. Uh, next slide. So uh, in a nutshell, um, we Levanes actually conducts all sorts of activities, uh, not just tech banter, but also activities to support uh, academia researchers and also startups, and um, in a different for that caters for different stages as well. And Tech Planter is literally a program for those uh, who are, which is in the early stage of uh, incorporation or maybe teams who might not have been incorporated yet, but willing to start a company and bring a, a social impact to the world as well. And through joining into this uh, program, you will not just get uh, support on uh, mentoring and brushing up your idea and so on, but then you'll be uh, meeting with series of uh, communities, uh, members from different communities to help you in prototyping or maybe trying to uh, structureize your patent a little bit more from IP strategy point of view. Maybe you'll hear a little bit more about this story later on in the panel session as well. And you'll probably find all sorts of different kinds of par partner companies to work or different kinds of investment uh, companies to actually help you in financing your uh, team as well. So uh, I will actually go into a bit more detailed explanation about the uh, some of the success stories that actually exist from this Tech Planter program. Next slide, please. So I actually chose three main big, uh, uh, three main successful uh, startup that came out from uh, Tech Plant as well, and I pick. Uh, I'll use this and as, as a one of the example. Actually, there's much more successful stories, but uh, some are not. Uh, conf some are confidential, so unfortunately we can't share. But these are one of the successful stories, such as ones that actually. Uh, by joining in to this uh, tech planter, they have actually managed to find the right prototype partner through joining into a Ota City. This is a, a one of the local government in Tokyo, and collaborating with them to find the local uh, manufacturers to help the to create their uh, device, medical device for pets, which is a wheel, basically a wheelchair for dogs. And this was a Thai startup who actually joined it to, in a tech planter in the past. There was another Singaporean startup called Crown Digital, which uh, are actually making a robot ballista, uh, coffee making machine, basically. And they actually, after, through, after joining into tech planter, they actually managed to collaborate with one of a major Japanese company called JR East. They are a uh, former national railway company, but they have been working on many, many projects to develop areas around station as well, train stations. And they actually successfully collaborated with them to implement their machine in Japan, in Tokyo as well. And finally, uh, in terms of the investment point of view, um, Sentient, which is AI start platform startup from uh, Singapore, they actually had the chance to collab, uh, be invested by one of our group companies, Real Tech Holdings, which will, you will uh, hear about them just after my presentation. After, uh, after their deals has been succeeded, they actually also got a co-investment from Seed Capital, which is a Singaporean government-based investment uh, vehicle as well. And through like this, this is just part of the success, success stories. But then through like this, uh, the, many of the startups who actually participated in Tech Planter gained uh, a uh, attraction from uh, our support and meeting with the right partners to bring them to the next.
next stage. So and next slide, please. So as you can see on here, as a nutshell, there are quite a lot of different kinds of merits that you may actually foresee from joining into Tech Planter. And it will be very important that you, uh, you once you join, our communicator will sit down with you and talk, discuss with you what kind of needs you might have and help you what kind of uh, help you in connecting and bridging towards the right partners so that you can all go to the next uh, stage. Uh, so finally, uh, to close my uh, presentation, yeah, uh, we look forward to all of you members to join in to our Tech Planter program this year, and you can actually join to our Tech Planter program from this QR code. And uh, if you have any questions related to Tech Planter, leave an S, feel free to ask any question during Q&A session. And then I think for another few, uh, one hour or so, you will we'll be hearing a little bit more uh, interesting stories from our partners as well as from our alumni. So I'll pass it back to Yev uh, with this. Thanks. Right, so thank you very much uh, to both. Uh both to Hakim-san and Michael-san for providing a very uh, detailed explanations about both Levanest and Tech Planter. So I hope our participants will uh, have become more clear about the things that we do as a company, as well as what Tech Planter is all about. So um, as mentioned by uh, Michael a few seconds ago, um, you'll also be hearing about Real Tech Holdings, which is one of our um, it's one of our group companies, it is a venture capital. So for the next part of our um, session, can I call on Mr. Daiki Kumamoto, who is uh, currently the growth fund manage manager at Real Tech Holdings to talk about you know, the company itself as a venture capital, what Real Tech Holdings is, and specifically on what kind of support um, the company has had for the Tech Planter alumni. So Daiki, are you there? Yep, I'm right here. Thanks, Yev. Can you hear me? Is my yes, voice all clear? Yes, I can hear you. It would be great if you could allow me to share my screen, but thank you very much for, yes. for that great opportunity. So, okay, so I'll share mine. Second. By the way, um, yes. listening to Hakim San's presentation, it was very, I like the way how he said Levanest members are, are unique uh, in, in that <laughs> aspect. Um, for those who haven't, you know, engaged with anyone from Levanest, you'll be amazed to hear and, and understand each of the different passion and, and, and great opportunities um, that they could provide to, to each of you. So um, hope hope I could share a little bit about my story too, um, engaging with the whole tech plant or ecosystem. Um, so, uh, sorry, to give a brief um, uh, introduction about myself, my name is Daiki Komoto. I currently work as a growth manager, so-called a capitalist in, in Real Tech Fund, also in charge of leading the whole global fund, which specifically invests into startups in Southeast Asia. Um, I was born in the UK, lived in the States and Hong Kong for quite a while. I have no idea why I have an American accent, but um, most uh, I'm currently based in Japan, um, looking into teams in Southeast Asia, um, willing to support areas, especially more the healthcare and, and, um, and the welfare area, but generally as a fund, uh, we're very um, broad in terms of where we invest. Um, to give you a very e e brief overview of not the holdings itself, the company was co-founded by a Leva Nest and also Ublena. So a lot of the explanation about Leva Nest was just done. So to give a brief uh, explanation about what Ublena is, Ublena is a, a, a Tokyo University born startup that mass cultivates a microalgae called Ublena, which photosynthesizes like a plant and also moves like an animal. Uh, they were the first in the world to mass cultivate that in an open wide environment, creating healthy food products, cosmetics, and even biofuel. So they've actually flew airplanes that consist the oil extracted out from the Ublena itself. Now, they IPO'd in the Tokyo Stock Exchange market back in 2012, but Back then, a lot of researchers came up to us and said, you know, why did such a weird micro IV company become so successful even in the capital market? And we understood back at that time, it, the, the startup market was all about, you know, apps and games and IT software based uh, areas. But when um, we, there was nobody actually supporting the field of, of deep tech in general. So we wanted to create a fund together with the Vanest that supports the next generations of Ublena, not just in the biotech and the agri-tech field, but holistically the real tech and, and, well, and deep tech, as we call it today. So in 2015, we started off a fund roughly about 85 billion US dollars in total. 
It was supported by SoftBank, ANA, JR East, uh, the Mitsubishi Group, the Mitsui Group, all these large corporates that wanted to have access and understanding about specifically the Japanese deep tech ecosystem. It was the first, well, well the first and second fund was all about Japanese investments, uh, Japanese deep tech, and it was, it was very Japanesey. Um, however, last year, uh, to, in 2020, we started off a new fund called the Realtek Global Fund, which specifically invests into startups in Southeast Asia. And I currently run this fund, but um, it's it's four or teams that are actually inside the tech planter ecosystem, also uh, who have joined uh, tech planter itself, um, and we're willing to to use the this fund to support uh, uh, each teams to come into the Japanese market, which I'll explain a little bit more later, a uh, detailed in, in later, but. Um, I don't want to talk a little bit about, uh, too much about the fund itself too. So um, to share a little about about my story in, inside this whole tech planter or ecosystem. Um, the first time I joined tech planter was back in 2019. Uh, the, the photo on the top, uh, you can see there, um, it, it was still a very crowded, not an online uh, type of tech planter. Um, but you know, my first impression was tech plan of tech planter was, what it, was that, you know, your usual business contests are, are, are more about finance and, and fancy slides and, and showcasing um, your, your greatness of, of business. However, er, I was able to understand and talk with different researchers and scientists and entrepreneurs within the region, what issues they're actually willing to solve with what sort of technology and, and, and solution. Um, sorry for those who can't, um, oops. It was very um, unique in that aspect to, to be able to understand and, and, and hear or actual issues that I, I could never see or, or hear or never heard about in my life if I was a, if I was just simply working as a venture capitalist in Japan. So, and one one key opportunity that I was able to have uh, was a, was a conversation with with um, a, a founder uh, with a founder of a company called NDR Medical called Alan Go, and. We met in Tech Planter. We were also having a lot of discussions in Singapore. He even came to Japan to understand a lot about the, the whole Tech Planter ecosystem, as well as what Levines and Real Tech Holdings is doing. And you know, every time we met, all, all his conversations was was about you know, Levines does have a lot of ways in 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 showcasing technology, in in being able to support coming into the Japanese market, manufacturing support. That's also very very well done. However, when it comes to funding in specific or investments in general. Within the whole region, nobody has uh, that opportunity, or nobody can actually invest into startups like like themselves. Which NDR Medical was actually e e developing a medical device for surgeons to use for biopsy purposes. But all investors said no to them simply because it's, it's very capex heavy. It's it, it you never know when it's going to make mo uh, money, and it was just simply e very very hard for different investors to come in. So. I came back to Japan and I was looking a lot about the whole startup ecosystem of the whole Southeast Asia and we understood that obviously the age group and, and, and the young uh, of passionate entrepreneurs and researchers are there. They're willing to solve issues like like we see every day or, or like we see uh, throughout the tech planter ecosystem. However, there was a lot of lack in terms of the investment side. No, not enough investors investing into the deep tech field with the right knowledge, also with the right supporting system itself. And, and I thought that this was a great opportunity for us to utilize the experience that we've been able to build within Japan towards startups in Southeast Asia as well. So that is why we created the fund uh, in 2020. Um, the fund's concept was to connect Southeast Asia and the, and the Japanese deep tech ecosystem, whether being in manufacturing support, R&D based investments and so on and so forth, but that merging the two, two entities or the two regions in, in one allows each to leverage upon each other's knowledge and experience in the deep tech field. So we, 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 we try to commit um, a holistic supporting uh, system for different teams and startups that have joined the tech plant or, or, or ecosystem, as well as for, for us that we actually invested into. And with that, we had a lot of different partners also uh, 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 having a similar kind of mindset towards uh, what we were thinking. Um, partners like JR East, Ibarra Corporations, the Honda Group, Marahanichiro, these large corporates in Japan were willing to invest into the fund. And, and the, their main purpose is obviously to, to connect with deep tech startups in Southeast Asia. So th these, these partners from the Global Fund are, are actually willing to engage. And sometimes, you know, um, 
communication wise, language barriers do happen, um, you know, culture barriers do happen, but we're more than happy to, to bridge that aspect in order to make each of the collaborations happen. So not just from partnership aspect, but also within the fund, uh, we try to create and, and, and support each of the startups in a, in a holistic uh, view, not just in terms of finance or, or business development in general, but also uh, in terms of manufacturing, IP strategy, uh, team building, PR creativeness. It, it, these are all aspects that are needed in order to run a business um, it within, um, well, in the, to, to run a business itself. But usually, e, e, well, researchers and scientists tend to, 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 to lack that aspect um, as they focus more on to, onto the technology side as well. So this is where we, we want to we be able to, to widen up the, the different opportunities and, and potential for startups to, to be able to grow and implement their technology out of the society faster. Um, so as a, as a whole, right, um, I wanted to share that Tech Planter was actually, you know, the, the, the biggest reason or, or the most, one of the biggest reasons for us why we even started off the fund. Like I was saying, a lot of the Tech Planter alumni and different startups wanted to have different types of funding support. However, there was no funds that can do so. Um, as a result, since we started off in 2020, um, the, the pictures on the right or the startups on the right are teams that we invested into but also joined Tech Planter two, three years before we did so. Um, so if I, NDR, like I explained, they, they joined Tech Planter in 2018. Uh, we were um, we are able to join their, their cap table on 2021. Um, same with Sentient IO, Austria Nova, iRadar, and, and Jala Technologies as well. So you can see here Singapore, Malaysia, uh, Indonesia, that's that's slightly being covered. We want to acce accelerate more, but we really want to see for 2022. Um, for those who do join, if there is a chance for us to support um, financially, um, we'll be more than happy to do so. And especially for those uh, who are from Thailand, Vietnam, and, and Philippines, these are areas that we haven't been able to engage with yet fully. So we're really excited to see e-teams uh, throughout the whole old tech planter or, or as a whole, um, um, how that collaboration can, can, can happen. So to final, finalize my presentation, I, I would generally think three reasons why you should join Tech Planter in 2022 for those who are still uh, are not fully sure if they should. One is obviously the, the lifelong family relationship in the whole Levenus ecosystem. I mean, you guys would be amazed to see how different Levenus members would, would want to, to move you to the next level, to, to door open your Japanese partners and, and to support you even simply from a friend aspect. Um, two, like what I said, uh, I do think it's a very strong, a good opportunity or door opening opportunity to, to open up those Japanese unique and, and well, sometimes very annoying uh, corporates, um, but that have strong assets to, to, that actually can support your, your business growth. And lastly, obviously, um, it does give you um, a door opening for Biotech Fund as well. Um, we'll be more than happy to see and engage whether we can support you or, or there too. So I guess um, everybody's tech planter journey starts today. Um, um, it'll be great to see a lot of teams applying and um, hope we can meet you soon. So thank you very much. That's it back to you. Yeah. All right, thank you very much Daiki for that very um, unique <laughs> presentation. So uh, I'm really happy that you, need, you used unique a lot because it really defines what we are as a group of companies. So, uh, you know, Daiki was very right in saying that we folk, we are unique and we also focus on deep technologies that are unique and i hope everyone is also um, even more encouraged because of this this real tech uh presentation because for one of course uh, money does not mean uh, everything but of course for deep tech startups it's really is one roadblock that a lot of teams and startups have been experiencing so as a group we have always made sure that we also give financial support to our um, teams that are in our network so again thank you very much uh, Daiki so uh, let me just uh, share back my screen okay so that was the presentation from real tech holdings and from this point on, we are going to proceed to the next part of our program, which is the panel session. Okay, there we go. Okay, so um, 
So the next part, uh, part will be a panel session from our esteemed uh, Tech Planter alumni. So it's entitled Opportunities for ASEAN Deep Tech Startups Within and Beyond the ASEAN Region. So of course, as you have uh, known throughout the presentations today that we have been doing Tech Planter in six countries in the ASEAN. And uh, we have today uh, three of our uh, very, um, again, let me say unique <laughs> uh, startups who have graduated. I'm not really going to say graduate, but of course, they are still in the Tech Planter system. So we have Dr. Suraya Abdul Rashid, the Chief Scientist of Carbotech. Uh, Sian VHD from Malaysia, Mr. Chabin Singh, the founder and group CEO of the Cross Group from Sing Singapore, and Mr. Song Pakon Punong no, Punonggong, uh, the CEO and CTO of Readring, which is from Malaysia. And this session will be moderated by the managing director of Levenas Singapore, Dr. Tihoko Tokwe. But before the actual session itself, I believe that the startups will be um, making a short presentation first. So uh, let me first call on Dr. Suraya to give her presentation about their startup. So if you, okay, just a second, please. Let me stop sharing my screen. All right. Okay. And let's Unless see. there was a video, uh, we as a panelist decided we are not going to do the small presentation in the beginning. Oh, I'm so sorry about the misunderstanding. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. I might just take it up from uh, okay. Jeff and mm -hmm. I will share my screen from my side. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, Tokura san So I guess we'll be heading indirectly to the panel session then. No worries. Um, very unique panel session, I guess, uh, <laughs> in a way. And then it's uh, whatever we do, it's kind of spontaneous every time. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, for the surprise. So the, the session itself is called Opportunities for ASEAN Deep Tech Startup Within Beyond and ASEAN Regions. And as Yev kindly explained, we do have three very unique uh, panelists who is joining us today. And the reason why we decided not to have the short presentation in the beginning was because we thought, okay, it might be good to have the real voice coming in and we have more time to actually discuss. Therefore, we decided to do this way. And um, I'll give a bit of an overview about um, Mr. Sompakon from Wheat Ring uh, in the sequence of how early they joined Tech Planter. So we start with him. So he joined uh, our tech planter in Thailand in 2019. And you will find out more about why he decided to create this Braille system and why he decided to challenge those issues that was existing in Thailand. And not only in Thailand, but probably beyond uh, Thailand was what he was thinking. Therefore, he joined our tech planter and we were able to find out what we may be able to do together with him. So we will hear about his story a little bit more from him during the panel. I'll go directly to the next panelist, who is Dr. Suraya. And as explained by Yev, she is a researcher. So we, oh, I believe we may have some researcher here today. And maybe you feel like, oh, not for me. You know, business is for the business people. Researcher better stay in the lab. Is that true? Maybe Kabotech, uh, Dr. Suraya can share with us what her point of view is there. And last but not least, uh, we are coming from uh, Singapore, Mr. Trabin from Crust. He's doing upcycling business here in Singapore. And uh, currently he is producing beer, but is that what he really want to do? Or what is the real issues that he's trying to challenge? So with these three panelists, what we want to showcase to you is that it's not one type of deep tech startup who can join Tech Planter. It could be different stage. It could be different issues that they are focusing on. As uh, alumni, hopefully they can uh, share with us the real voice. Because up until now, right, the presentation sounds so, so, so nice and supporting. Is it really true? We will hear from those uh, third par party point of view of what they think. So let me stop sharing the screen and me talking because we would like to have all the panelists and I think uh, all of you are pinned there. Okay, so let's go. Um, is it mine? <laughs> oh, it's <was> me. <laughs> 
it's interesting, right? So, so we have to be on, on the on the go every time so that we are aware. Okay, so um, during the presentation, we actually heard. <laughs> I know, I know you are saying, Kyoko, shut up and then let us speak. <laughs> no, I have no idea why someone just keeps spamming call me. It's, um, good. it's okay, yeah. it's okay. Things Wrong happen. Timing. I'm just uh, <laughs> meet myself for, for a time being. <laughs> No worries. So um, during the during the presentation, right, we we heard from all of them saying, you know, because of tech planter, they were going, you know, able to attract these kind of thing. They were able to achieve this. However, I'm pretty sure that each and every one of the panelists has life before tech planter, and you already had some kind of success before this. So uh, maybe I will try to ask Cross um, Trabin first to see what were you doing before and maybe uh, if you already had a partner why did you decide to explore for additional one and uh, those kind of things could uh, give a bit of an overview to the others so I'll pass it to Travis. Okay I hope my phone doesn't ring again. Um, yeah um, hi everyone um, I guess I have a very different relationship with Levenes because I already entered Japan and then we got um, Levenes um, mm -hmm into our ecosystem. Um, so um, I met Kyoko-san, I think back in February, March last year. Mm, yes. um, yeah, and um, I also did invite her over for a workshop, uh, a tasting session I actually did. Yes. Um, and then I got to know Lee Vanessa a little bit more because I did not know them before, prior to me entering Japan. Um, but then what I realized was that the team was very warm and I guess what Levenes does very you well. you us to nice drinks, right? Yeah, true. I mean, I mean, the envi I mean, there was a good environment, but at the same time, like what um, got me really interested in Levenes was because like the atmosphere that I got was very warm. By the same time, it's an atmosphere where you listen more. And I think as a startup then, right, because you, it's very uncertain, right? It's a very chaotic world. Um, um, it becomes a little bit overwhelming sometimes, right? It's just nice to be heard. Right. Um, listen in terms of like your problems, you know, what, what are you looking to solve? Right. And then, um, yeah, then, then that kick started our relationship, of course, with a couple of beers as well. Um, yeah. So that was back in April. And then we also then, um, um, and we were part of Tech Planter. But before Tech Planter, I think we also got an investment from Levenes and Glocalink. Um, um, and then that, um, Levenes definitely did accelerate our growth in Japan because. From a business development point of view, we were not having that many problems in Japan, but from a funding and a manufacturing point of view, we were. Um, and that, that part was when uh, Levenes mm -hmm. actually came in and solved quite a number of um, um, that, that problem that we had in the back end. And then also, I think our timing was just, just perfect, right? That, yeah. Like when we met. And then I guess as a startup and or any other business, I guess seizing the opportunity is quite an important thing. You never know who you meet and what kind of connections that you may be able to make. So yeah. I guess I'm, I'm really grateful that uh, Travin was quite open because we, we kind of met and then, you know, on the spot, I started asking him, oh, you should come into Tech Planter, right? <laughs> Although he didn't know what we do, he kind of said, sure, why not? And then uh, look, look where we are now. So um, I really appreciate those uh, open-mindedness from the startup side as well. It's, it's always both ways. Maybe I can move on to uh, Dr. Sompa Kontan. And in your case, how you started is different because I think it rooted into how you grew up and then uh, based on your family background as well. Yes, I, I was born to a blind father who started a charity school for the blind 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, actually. And actually, I, I didn't know I want to, to help blind people with the technologies, but I, I was uh, a boy with dream of being an inventor. I love engineering. I love making things. But finally, I found that uh, the gap on the technology that the blind people are using is very different, very big gap from the tech we have for normal for, for consumer electronics today. That's why I started to invent a device. You may see it from the background because I don't have any, any prototype left at me right now. So I only have a photo of it. But actually a braille device for, for blind people to read. 
and spell from the text or on a smartphone at a tenth the cost. And so that in, so I started the development of this idea in 2015 and formed a company in 2017 after winning the first low, uh, local domestic prize from in Thailand. And then we joined several stage of deep tech, but we couldn't find many of deep tech stage in Thailand that time. And after that, we, we met uh, Ivet, Ivet mm. Engineering, who was the winner of the Tech Planter 2018. Mm. And she invited me to, to apply for Tech Planter program. That's why our journey with Tech Planter begins and it brings a lot of great opportunities. So to us, that is also very um, heartwarming as well as really we are privileged that alumni themselves sometimes recruit another tech planter uh, participants. So yes. where he was mentioning, I bet uh, that's the dog wheelchair one that Michael was talking about bit before. Yeah. So without them coming into our ecosystem, I don't think we would have met them. Although the issues that he is trying to address is very important and we probably be agreeing with what he does, but without us knowing it, it's almost impossible. So I really um, would like to ask all the alumni as well as the future Tech Planter uh, members, if you have a good experience, share them. Also, if there's something that we need to be improving, we also would like to hear from you because if we don't hear, sometimes it's very difficult for us to identify as well. And um, thank, thank you, Sonpa Konsan. And I will probably move on to Dr. Suraya, who is also different uh, in a way that she is a researcher at university and what made her to decide to um, make this into business was it an easy journey for you? I assume it's a bit, bit difficult, right? Yes, yes, quite challenging. Um, so thank you, Dr. Tokui-san, and Libanes, uh, actually, for the kind invitation. Uh, I love sharing about my, my story, <laughs> and I love listening to other people's stories as well, because it's really inspiring. So um, I completed my PhD in 2004, and since 2004, um, uh, I'm a researcher in university, actually, in UPM, and since 2004, I have have been um, doing uh, focusing on nanotechnology, more specifically um, uh, studying nanomaterials, you see. So there are very various types of nanomaterials. And in the early days, um, you know, when we do research, people would say, uh, you know, the grant providers would say, you need to commercialize, you need to commercialize. But, you know, you really have no idea how to commercialize, mm. especially if it's really a complicated technology, nanotechnology, you know, it's so difficult. So mm. I was like, um, after 10 years of, I think, of, of working on a particular type of, uh, of material, I just felt that, which was quite challenging, uh, it was carbon nanotubes, um, I just felt that I wanted a change and that's when I decided to study a different type of, of material, which, um, it, uh, um, which is the, 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 the base material of my invention, which is a photosynthesis right. cancer. So since then, um, uh, you know, so the journey was long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the back of my mind it was always um, commercialization. You know, I want to do something useful. I want to bring the science to people. You know, so people can mm. use the science. And then I, I don't know. I'm, I, 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 I'm quite passionate about that. And in around uh, 2017. Uh, I, I, I invented um, something in 2016. <laughs> Actually, it's a process, a uh, um, patented process in 2016, but the application for this material is wide. So I was thinking um, what to, you know, uh, what sort of area to venture into because um, um, the carbon dots, the nanomaterial, they have um, various applications. So, so I think, think many, many, sorry, many yeah. scientists, right? They have difficulty because sometimes they come up with very good technology. Yes. 
but no yeah. so sure where no. to apply or where is the pain point so that people in the society will be interested. That's right, that's right. So um, be coming from University of Putra Malaysia where our niche area is agriculture and mm. from my understanding of the material, I thought, hey, this material is so interesting. Uh, I think that it can be a photosynthesis enhancer based on my understanding of its properties. Mm. So that's when, but of course, I'm a chemical engineer. I have no idea about plants. Mm. <laughs> so this is when uh, I had to, um, you know, collaborate with people from Faculty right. of Agriculture, where mm. where I said, "Hey, um, listen to my idea. What do you think?" And and, mm. and they said, "Let's try." And so that's what we did. We tried, and mm. and um, um, the 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 results were really really good. But at that time, you know, being a researcher, it, I I was mostly alone because it's difficult to find people, you know, with the same vision, with the same passion. Right. So, uh, although I do have collaborators, but to push, mm. you know, it, it's you, you alone, you have to push. <laughs> right. So, so you have, you, I guess when we talk about this QPMI, where your questions and passion is a driving force for many of the uh, entrepreneurs, I think it becomes important because at times you feel like, oh, Maybe I need to give up because nobody is listening to me. Yeah. However, if there is an issue that you really want to address, I guess finally your passion behind will push you. And actually all of you did um, take chances with us on Tech Planter. For Malaysia and Singapore, we do have our subsidiary here. So we can say, you know, we do have company here. We can work with you. But wouldn't it have been very uh, scary for Sonta Konsan Although your friend did recommend it to you, we are not there physically, right? We, we do travel there, but because of um, now with COVID, we, we can't, and hopefully we can now. However, uh, at, the, at your time, we were able to, but weren't you afraid that we will come and do the event and like, you know, oh, good luck and bye-bye kind of thing? Yes, we can be. Oh, you you're asking me about yes the, yes just, because because we are not there physically, uh we only I there see. for the event time right? Weren't you afraid that mm. maybe we might not see each other again after the event? Mm. Yes, and also I I I had a deep hope, it's just a small hope inside that maybe some of the alumni of the tech planter will will join or being a representative for Livernese in, in Thailand. I don't know if that's possible. But yeah, I think there have been a very strong network in Thailand and very strong partner in Thailand. I think there's a possibility that maybe you can consider having a, a branch office in Thailand and working with our startups in more, in more than just in an event, hopefully. Yes. And of course, and then you had the opportunity to work with the Otaku projects to do the yes. uh, prototyping. And yes. I think uh, Jindo Takumi, yes. he was able to come and visit you a few times as well as yes. the next IP um, yes. for the uh, IP strategy. We, at that time, we were able to travel, right? So we were able yes, to yes. actually, you know, um, visit the school and then actually see how it's mm. been use the at the places yes. so i really hope that um this year this, this year, year hopefully we are going to have physical yeah. some kind of um talks together so that we can uh work on this yes, maybe hopefully. i'll go yes thank you and maybe i'll go back to uh traveling he you did mention you are already expanding to Japan and you are having, you know, uh, opportunities, but maybe it was a bit difficult to get uh, investment or some other kind of support. Um, what, what do you think was the key for you? Is it more of a communication part or what, what do you think was the difficulty you were facing with the financial part in Japan? Uh, the fact that I've never been to Japan Right, and I've been running a company there for like a year uh, with a team there, but <laughs> I still haven't been to Japan, right? Oh, no, uh, you were planning to go, right? Yeah, but then they shut down after three weeks of opening up. Mm. Um, I mean, there's only so much I can do in Singapore. I think at least me and my team, we've done a decent enough job um, to, to, to penetrate into the Japanese market, mm. um, you know, have um, some revenue already. I'm also talking to quite a number of bigger companies, right? Um, but 
there is so much more I could do if I was actually present in Japan as well, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I do know quite a bit about production, for example, because I was the main R&D guy at the start of the company, right? Because I was a one-man show doing everything. Um, but I can't do all that right now because my team in Japan don't have that expertise, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of times it's like they have to go down to the brewery and they have to take a video and I will just guide them to a certain extent um, mm. um, or teach them. So it's a lot of, um, while they are running the market there for me and me trusting them fully and them trusting mm. me to actually make decisions mm. about the Japanese market, also knowing that I haven't been to Japan or I don't know anything about Japanese culture. Um, uh, but I think so far, so good. We have actually worked really well together. Uh, by the end of the day, we could still do so much more if I was in Japan. Um, so that was the main problem, right? So that's why we focused at the start on not bringing in like VC money, a large check size, um, uh, because we wanted to focus on strategic investors at smaller check size, where they come in and then they also come in as, uh, as our board of advisor um, mm. across Singapore and Japan. Um, mm. And how we maximize the board of advisor is to make our network work for us. Um, mm. um, so essentially, that was, the, that was the model that we used back in April, May, um, when mm. we were, you know, trying to find a way to penetrate into Japan. And with, whole, with the whole COVID situation and Japan not fully opening up, of course, there was also limitations in terms of what I, I can do. But mm-hmm. at least from last quarter onwards, um, in Q4 last year, um, when vaccination rates started going up in Singapore and Japan, um, a lot of our, our B2B business model, which was actually our main business model, that we had to shift away when COVID hit and um, companies were, not, uh, were, were more risk adverse, um, mm. now we can open up the, the, the B2B side of what we do already um, mm. uh, because more companies are opening up. So the B2B side, just to explain, is like the SUL model, something unique to us and is where we differentiate ourselves from everybody else in the market. Mm. It's called the sustainable unique label um, where we come in and we know a lot of f and companies have their own food waste. And instead of them buying external products, they actually engage crust and we build a product for them using their mm. surplus food. Um, so that's something that really picked up in Q4 last year and now we have been closing much larger contracts but I still haven't been to Japan. <laughs> mm. You will you will this year I hope. <laughs> but, but even if you don't I guess you have a very good strong team in Japan right now as well yeah, as we, true they have done wonders so far. Mm, and we, we would love I, I think um, Yuko from Livanes side is working very closely with uh, Crust in Japan side so, you know, how you can involve us into become a team member and then yep. try to work together is also something that we try to do. So, so we are not really like a supporter in a way, but it's more like we are one of your member type of the uh, mindset is what okay. we try to, uh, what we try to have. Yeah, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Travin. And maybe I'll ask, Suraya-san, Dr. Suraya. So in your case as well, um, after the tech planter, we decided to invest from BrokerLink Singapore side and receiving investment from um, entity like BrokerLink Singapore, was it difficult decisions for you or what, what, was, what made you decide, okay, it's okay for them to come in? Okay, thank you. Very, very interesting question. Um, I was super excited, <laughs> basically. Um, I, I want to share a little story because, you know, I wasn't, uh, Carbotech was incorporated in 2018. Mm. And uh, at that time, I would say I was alone. I was alone mm. and I knew that I couldn't move the company alone. Um, but who, I mean, uh, who was going to join me? Who, mm-hmm. you know, I had no idea at that time. And, you know, even if you have great tech, but if you have no team, you won't get anywhere. So, so that is when I, I sort of like envisioned who is going to join me, who is going to join me. And suddenly, um, Chiho, he's around, I think. <laughs> Chiho <laughs> joined me. Um, and uh, I remember um, my, my, my um, mentor, from, from, from university, he said, um, you know, I, I, because I said, I don't know who's going to be, you know, who's going to be in my team. And he said, you know, your teammates, it's like a marriage, he said. And I think that's a re- that was a really good, uh, you know, perspective. Mm. Because, and he said, ask somebody out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was, you know, how I approached um, Chiho. I actually 
asked you if he would, you know, join me. Mm -hmm. And I was so pleased when he said yes, um, because we match. Uh, before this, I, I had another teammate. Uh, he was a project manager. Uh, we didn't really match, but, um, you know, me and Chi Ho, we worked really, really well together. And 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 and, and after that, um, Shazwan came along. And so, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the team grew. And mm -hmm. so at, at one point, I was like, who's going to invest in us? Because <laughs> I'm so, in, you know, I'm so excited about the potential of Carbotech and I was wondering who's gonna who's gonna <laughs> and so when um, Ravi reached out to us Global Link Singapore I was I was I was just uh, it was amazing because um, you know uh, having uh, having investment from Global Link really really helped uh, um, uh, us to be able to move forward uh, otherwise you know, it would have been slower, but with uh, with the investment from Global Link, it has um, really helped us, uh, you know, move a lot faster. <laughs> I'm glad to hear Ravi. that. I think he's around. Ravi, yes, Ravi is around. <laughs> he's listening and he's typing on the chat. <laughs> so, um, did I answer your question? Yes, yes. Yeah. Th thank you very much. And um, yes, time flies when we are having a good conversation. And I think our allocated time uh, is approaching. Therefore, we might need to go into the very last questions. I think um, each and every one of you give us some, some examples. And um, hopefully the listener were able to imagine, okay, maybe for me is like, you know, Travin style or Sompakon san style or Suraya san style. And also, there are other ways as well. We can only showcase uh, three um, unique cases for today. One is the prototyping and IP part for Sompa Konsan side. For Kevin is, although he did have already access to Japan market, he was able to also leverage further onto uh, expansion to Japan, uh, utilizing some of the existing programs that we had. And Suresan for, you know, continuing her journey to do an entrepreneurship with her teammate. And by coming into Tech Planter, we were able to actually explore possibility of investment. So these are the three different styles. Maybe from uh, each of you, you can give some comments or suggestions to the future Tech Planter uh, applicants. If you are them or from your point of view, how should they utilize divaness to their advantage? Therefore, coming into Tech Planter can be uh, beneficial for them as well as for us to be able to help them through uh, the journey. Maybe I will go, once again, start with Sraya san. Still muted. Okay, Tokyo san, is it like um, um, what, what, uh, what advice I can give to people who are interested? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or join me. Yeah, I would say everyone, please <laughs> join Tech Planter. Join Tech Planter. You have nothing to lose. I remember at that time, um, Chiho had just. I, I don't know if I had uh, asked Chiho out yet or not. <laughs> not really, no, no, no. You know, I, I don't know if, uh, if Chiho had joined me yet or not, but it was around the same time. Um, because remember, I was alone at that time. And um, when um, uh, Tech Planter came to university to, to tell us about Tech Planter and to encourage people to join, uh, it, I was still alone. I think I didn't have a team at that time. So, um, but, you know, but, but, but uh, I remember Hakimson uh, uh, and uh, somebody else from uh, Live and Nest, Afik was it, but he's not um, there anymore. Uh, they emailed me and they followed up with me and, and, and you know, and made sure that I, I, I joined them. Um, I, I mean, I made sure that I applied. So I just really uh, want to encourage everyone, if you have the opportunity, please, please join Tech Planter because you will, um, it will open your eyes, you will get a better networking, you will get, you will gain experience. There's really nothing to, lo to lose, but everything to gain. We, I never imagined to be a champion of Tech Planter 2021, Asia champion. I, it's just unbelievable. Um, and I remember, maybe people remember me crying <laughs> at one point. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, do, do, do join. Um, it, it's, it will be uh, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Thank you very much, um, 
very, very kind words. Thank you. And then it's based on the, all the hard work that all the teams been doing. I'll pass it on to Sonpa Kon-san. Yes. Uh, I want to talk about my experience at Tech Planter in Thailand 2019. Not only I, I came to share my idea and the prototypes, but I also, it, it, it's like listening to something very new and learning something new from a PhD like Dr. Suraya and, and eight other amazing researchers. So I felt like I was a high school student learning from many teachers and professors out there. And other than that, you, you have like a stronger network and also you, you like, you've, you're meeting with the people with the same passion and the same mind. I would say some like nerd, nerdy people. I, I, I consider myself a nerd. I'm not really a businessman. I'm just an inventor. So uh, it feels like home in a family of uh, scientists. So it's a good experience. And I think there's nothing to lose. Like like the guy said, you just join and you will have something. You, I think you gain more than you, you, you share. And I want to talk about the prototyping program. So you should, you should uh, know what you, you really want for the prototyping partner. Because in my experience, the Ota City Super Factory are very specialized in mechanical things and high precision, high quality prototyping. And also some electronics design because in, in Japan, they are very passionate at work. They may have uh, the same skills as other uh, technical technicians in, in other countries, but their passion is excellent. That's why they make th things different and world-class quality. And uh, but I didn't find uh, many uh, coder or developers, so I had to do the coding, everything on my own. So actually, I, right now in, in Red Ring, I work as a main developer alone. Mm. And with, but with help from Super Factory partner, we had a few of working prototypes shipped from Japan and also a patent, a very fast track patent from Japan from our Nest IP Lab partner. Mm. And that, that have brought some value to the, to the business of Red Ring and also after that, we went on to send uh, one prototype that was developed further from the one from Ota City. Mm. And we won the, the prize, Touch of Genius Prize. This is the US, US mm. prize for uh, technologies for the blind or global blind people with the endorsement from Livernest. So it doesn't just you, you don't just end up in prototyping and manufacturing, but you also, you have more opportunities to, to, to grow the business. And just recently, I just sold a few of the prototypes last year, and this March, it will be exhibiting in the USA for in the season assistive the technology conference in, in California. So hopefully Great. there will be some, <laughs> some sales coming this year, hopefully. Yes. Looking forward to hearing your updates and uh, good news. More to Thank come. You, and we, we are really great honor to be uh, part, part of working together with you. And then we'll probably try to uh, wrap up with co final comments from Kevin. Yeah, um, you might hear some knocking in the background because my brother is trying to get in the room. Pros and cons of working from home. Um, yeah, so I guess for, for me, um, I've been to quite a number of um, accelerator programs already or startup programs. And um, you can tell that Livernet structures it in such a way where it's mostly in, isn't all about helping the startups. Um, 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 and that's the way they have, they have focused a lot of their efforts towards. Um, and at least for me, when I approached things, when I, when I joined Tech Planter, it was mostly um, about, I don't like to make assumptions of what, they can do or they cannot do, mm -hmm. right? So I want the kind of person where I remember like when I met Kihoko for that one-to-one -one session, I was like, these are all my problems. 
<laughs> yeah, and then I gave her like one entire huge list, right? And then, okay, let's see, let's see what we can actually um, do to work together to go and solve most of them. And to be honest, um, most of them was actually solved. Um, 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 I mean, some are still being solved till this day, but we definitely did um, um, much, much, much better after we joined Techlanta, uh, both from a business development, but also from production standpoint as well. Because there's no point having so much demand for your product when there's a lack of supply. So we managed to meet a lot of the supply uh, part of what we actually do. Um, and that brought us to the next level. Um, so that's mostly what I would actually say. Um, I've actually enjoyed every every moment um, um, while working for Live Nest. Thank you, Trevin. And thank you, Sompakong San, Dr. Straya. Thank you very much for sharing. And then I'm sure the... Um, Audiences would like to ask more questions. Oops. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <They beat it. laughs> we will have a um, bit of a question session after this, I think, which will be announced from um, Yev's side. So I would like to thank all of the panelists. Thank you very much for joining us. And then I would like to uh, pass it back to Yev. Thank you for the opportunity. No, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. San, for passing it back to me. And thank you, of course, to our panelists. Um, I guess that was a really very interesting and, of course, again, unique discussion. Uh, uh, as you have heard from our alumni, uh, they had really, really very different reasons. I guess when they uh, tried to join um, Tech Planter, uh, it would be like because of personal passions, uh, it would be because you don't have a team yourself, or even, you know, even if you're already to some extent successful, um, doesn't mean that you can also get some help from us. So I guess uh, hopefully, again, everybody was even more inspired by that uh, mini panel session that we had with our alumni, which was hosted and um, moderated by Dr. San. So let me proceed to the next part, uh, which is, as Dr. Toko said, the Q&A portion. <clears throat> so um, until now, I think there were a few questions that were raised uh, via the chat, and a few of them have been answered by, I think, Hakim San. I think there was one question left that was not answered yet from, I'm not sure if it's a Mr. or Ms. Ram Pasang. So um, he, he or she's saying, this is a very good program. Are there requirements or criteria to qualify under the Tech Planter program? So maybe I can ask uh, either Michael San or Hakim San to answer that. Um, are there requirements for criteria qualify under Tech Planter program? Um, not really, but um, okay, there's something. Yeah, I'm asking there's you. a video. Yes. Okay, there's a message coming. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. sorry about it. Just, okay, <laughs> Your okay, video okay. wasn't on. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, so there we go. There's not really a requirement, but one of the focus area that we have is the deep tech field. So instead of like IT, game app, e-commerce, we focus on deep tech, which is like technology that requires physical development, such as agri tech, med tech, uh, I don't know, engineering, um, AI. Um, drone technology, those kind of things are the focus areas that we have. Uh, so I guess um, we don't actually restrict anyone from applying uh, to Tech Planta under the, under the fields, uh, but uh, do we do have a focus in terms of the technology area that we actually are looking more and more towards it or uniqueness behind it? Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Maybe in addition, like I said, maybe let me add this. Uh, I think one, again, thing that is unique about, about us and Tech Planter is that we don't really discriminate uh, against the, readiness, the technology readiness level of the tech itself. So uh, there are a lot of competitions around the world that really, really give focus to that. And they want to make sure that it's going to be ready, going to be, ready to be commercialized or you know, implemented into society. But for us, even idea stage uh, technologies are very much welcome. Uh, may it be in your mind or even fully ready, that's totally okay. And uh, as long as, again, if it's solving a deep issue, we don't really have any uh, complaints about it. And we are very much welcome to apply. Yep. So are there any other questions? I think other questions such as the certificates and recordings uh, have been answered by a chat. Um, unfortunately, we cannot issue certificates as of now um, because, of course, it's not a training program. I'm very sorry about we are very sorry about that. 
But uh, for the recording, since uh, all the information that has been shared are public, uh, we will be sharing uh, via our YouTube channel. Also, we will be sending via email, I think. Okay, um, here's another question from, uh, if not mistaken, Miss Serene Wong. Uh, is there any quota on the number of startups that gets into Tech Planter? Should I go again, or um, you want to answer, or? Maybe Hakim, sir. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why not, why not Hakim, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, right, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Serim, for the question. So, in terms of the application, we don't have limit. But in terms of the finalists, yes, we have limit, because we only have, like, around one day event, so we cannot actually listen to all the presenters like from 30 for this. So we can only select nine finalists uh, that will be doing the final presentation on the demo day. But if you are not becoming the finalist, you also have the opportunity to share about your project as a lightning pitch. Okay, there's another session that we have during the break time where you can also involve to present your project during the demo day okay but that's also a limited spot so we need you to maybe um yeah uh, apply first let us maybe uh, understand further about your project and maybe you will be one of the finalists for this year thank you thank you Hakim -san. Maybe, maybe just to uh, add in to what Hakim just mentioned um joining to tech planter is quite important whether or not you actually get selected as a finalist um, we regard all the members who actually joined into Tech Planter as a Tech Planter community. And we try to keep in touch with all of the members, whether or not you're finalist or not. And if there are uh, any kinds of a suitable program that uh, even if you're not a finalist, we'll try to uh, communicate with you and try to see if we can help. And also from your end, even if you're not selected as a finalist, you can uh, come and uh, communicate with us anytime uh, w whenever you have any kinds of needs and we will be uh, we will be able to sit down with you and discuss how we might be able to support you as well so uh, that's just one point that I did I wanted to add, add in yep thank you very much Michael -san. I was actually about to say the same thing so um, yeah please do not worry about uh, you know being a finalist or whatnot tech planter demo day is an event but the whole thing the whole initiative is uh, a lifelong process if i may say so uh, we will be supporting all of the teams that um will be applying uh, in, to the whole ecosystem and uh we have another question from usm vp rde i think it's part of the university if i'm not mistaken so beside from the application form that we need to fill up what are the other things that we need to prepare mm -hmm. all right uh, so i think wait, let me answer this okay so yeah the first step to join into our program is through this application form okay so for all the uh, applicants this year please uh, try to take your time to fill up the application form carefully for you to maybe put as much detail in terms of what kind of issue that you want to solve, what kind of technology that actually you are developing. So we have enough information on what you actually try to maybe uh, do with your uh, technologies and also startup or companies. Okay, And when you are selected to go the next stage, next stage this is where our support come in as well, where if you don't have a proper presentation yet, okay, this is our job to actually help you uh, working together with you to craft your presentation so you can attract the right partners for you to work with. Okay, all right. So I think that's the most important part to start with the application form. After that, it's actually a journey that we will go through together until the demo day and of course after the demo day as well. All right. And because that project is not like three month or six month incubation program, we hope that we can keep this relationship as long as we can. So we can both together, uh, maybe working and maybe bring the solution, your solution to the society. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kim San. So like Kim San said, like joining Tech Planter is basically relationship building with us. As Dr. Suraya mentioned earlier, it's like asking us out <laughs> to, to become, you know, part of your ecosystem or like you becoming part of our ecosystem. 
Yeah, so um, next question from Afilia Razlan. So are there any criteria, which was answered earlier, but also hopes or expectations on the next finalist that the Divinus is looking for? Kind of like a very pageant question, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, um, maybe Michael-san, do you want to answer that? Uh, difficult question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hopes or expectation. hopes or expectations? Yeah. Um, Maybe I'll touch upon a little bit about the judging criteria of Tech Planter. Mm -hmm. So um, we have four criteria. One of it is uh, the fact that um, you have passion. That's a really important part. And then uh, another one is that you are actually trying, is it something like uh, actually solving the world issues? You know, those kind of things are also important as well. And then, um, in fact, is there like novelty? Is it the technology is something new? Is also something that we also take a look at. And then, what was the sorry? What was the final one? Practicability, uh, yes. So, um, yes, I think uh, I think Yeb did mention that you know that the the, the, uh, the technology uh, readiness is not what we purely look on, but then we also do it since this program is called Tech Planter. So we kind of uh, expect uh, participants to have certain kinds of uh, knowledge or background of technology behind your idea, not just coming up with uh, any random ideas that without any uh, backgrounds of like evidence behind it. So that I think that that would be something that we would be expecting. And uh, if there's, if it's an idea that fulfills all of those four criteria that I, I just explained, then we would be definitely be interested. I yeah. hope that answered. Maybe addition to that as well. Yeah. Uh, Michael mentioned about global issues, right? But you can also bring the unique local issues that you are trying to solve. Because sometimes, yeah, the issues is not actually everywhere, right? Some place only uh, in the country or in the place, but it's very unique that you are trying to solve. So you need to share with us about that. Yeah. So maybe we can also match you with the either other startup or either technologies that we can complement with your solutions to make it better so you can deliver your solutions to the society. Right. Yep. So thank you very much, uh, Mike Masan and Kim San. Here's another one from Hope Carino. So what are the usual deep tech technologies that so far you've catered regarding solid-based management programs? Maybe I can start from Philippines. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, I guess, uh, for regarding waste management, I guess for us, it's not exactly management of the waste itself, but waste technologies. So a few that come to mind are, for example, our um, grand prize winner for uh, Tech Planter Philippines, 2020, uh, which is uh, a startup uh, that converts all types of plastic waste into um, insulating construction material. And I think there are a few teams that are, are quite similar in nature, not just in the Philippines. And we also have a few um, startups as well that have been using microorganisms to convert uh, bio, uh, biodegradable waste or biological waste into um, usable products such as fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe for other countries, maybe I think Michael Sam or Hakim Sam could also add regards to waste management. Okay, maybe I would like to share. Uh, in Indonesia, we also find different kind of maybe kind of environment or eco tech based solutions. And yeah, we have a lot which related to plastic, but there's also like unique uh, issues like in Indonesia related to the fly ash which is the waste from the um, call power plant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like the, the our grand winner in 2020, right? The tech problem lab, they are working on to utilize this waste from a, a power plant and create a new materials that can be used safely for the building materials. So this is something unique uh, in terms of the waste management in that country. So maybe we want also to know about yours as well this year okay so hopefully you can apply
I guess. Um, yeah, I think there were quite there are quite a lot in different fields, and I think it depends on how you define the solid waste as well. But I think if I remember from Vietnam in the past, there was a team trying to create new material from the fish scale from the villages in uh, near well fish fishery villages in Vietnam as well. And I guess that's one of a unique. Um, issues that exist in Southeast Asia as well. So um, I think it could be anything. And I think especially in point in perspective from Singapore, there's quite a lot of um, food, solid food waste uh, related theme as well. And I guess one of the start like, you know, Crust is working to create beer from um, uh, bread as well that will be discarded if it hasn't been touched upon. There's also other startup actually utilizing other kinds of food waste materials to create new products, as well as maybe some teams trying to connect to uh, do um, insect based uh, farming as well by utilizing uh, waste food waste material from different kinds of areas. So I think there's 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 a lot of way of thinking on this area, and I think uh, as as you have more uh, interesting, unique issues that exist in Southeast Asia, we'll be very, very interested to know as well. Yep, Super. thank you, everyone. So uh, Hope was also saying that it's more on upcycling, but yeah, I think a lot of the startups are really uh, re related to upcycling um, the waste materials, especially for solid ones. I guess for ones that are really into managing the waste, it would be more on the um, liquid waste, if I may say, like water related waste. So, like water treatment is also another uh, category, I guess, that we see a lot in our applicants. Okay. Um, next question again from Serene Wong. Uh, if we are part of other acceleration programs, can you still join the Tech Planter community? Yeah, I think from our side, it's no problem. But <laughs> yeah. if you, the other side, have problem, maybe you need to talk yeah. first. Okay. <laughs> For us, we welcome uh, anyone actually to join us. Yeah, no problem on that matters. Yes, we are very much flexible and open to, yeah, especially for Levanes, uh, we of course um, emphasize the importance of having a team as also Dr. Uh, Saraya emphasized earlier. It's not just a team within, uh, you know, the people within a team, but actually team of teams or, or the whole ecosystem. So yeah, um, we don't see any reason why it should be exclusive to us because you, all startups need all the help they need from all kinds of supporters. Yeah, on top of that, actually, uh, like in Malaysia, we are working with different government agency. Hmm. They have their own acceleration program as well, like MTDC. But we are actually working together, connecting our program. Yeah, when you join Tech Planter, we can also refer you to their program and hmm. vice versa. So that's how Tech Planter actually working. We are working with everyone as long as we have the same vision and also yeah, want to deliver this technology to society. Maybe I'll add uh, another point from my end. Uh, I guess this would be like a, maybe a tip for startup side or uh, any entrepreneur side. I think each of the acceleration program has its strengths and maybe weakness as well. Um, I think one of our strengths is to create these kind of ecosystem, try to help you to connect different kinds of people. And it's a long term program as well. And then other acceleration program has its own uh, strengths as well. So I think for startup side, maybe you can wisely use different kinds of acceleration program to fulfill the you know, the whole needs that you might have. And that way you might be able to accelerate yourself uh, much faster. So that, that's my, uh, I guess, pointer from my end. Okay, so I think that was actually the last question and it's very perfect timing because we're coming to the end of our time as well. <laughs> it's 5.30, uh, it's 3.30 right now. Uh, so again, thank you again to all of our participants and our panelists. Uh, I hope and we hope of course that you were even more and more inspired to join Tech Planter and our deep tech ecosystem around ASEAN and around the world. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, actually for each of the countries that we are hosting Tech Planter, it's going to be different. Uh, there will be different application deadlines. So uh, we will be starting from Philippines and then going on to Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, Thai Malaysia, and then lastly, Thailand. And the application deadlines will be as follows. So for Philippines, because it's the first, 
It's going to be in around three weeks time on March 18th. Uh, for Indonesia, the week after, March 25, Singapore, the week again after, so April 2. And then for Vietnam, it's going to start, uh, I mean, the application deadline is um, almost a month after, on May 13th, Malaysia, May 20th, May, and Thailand, uh, May 27th. So as you can see, please, uh, if you have like phones right now, you could take pictures of the QR code. Uh, you could also take note of the uh, application link. Maybe someone could also send it in the chat right now. Uh, and yeah, so uh, we hope uh, we are very much looking forward to your entries and so helping solve deep issues in the world, maybe local or global issues. And uh, before we close, uh, let me just take this opportunity to also advertise one of our upcoming events. It's actually on Saturday, two days from now. So uh, as explained, I think earlier by Hakim and uh, Michael, we do have one initiative called the Hyper Interdisciplinary Conference, which is where we try to put together different people from different fields and different walks of life or different sectors in the SMT scene. Um, so this one uh, will be the last leg, actually. We did Philippines, Malaysia, and then we have Singapore on Saturday. Um, so the theme of this conference will be what will homo sapiens or humans be in 100 years? So it's all about designing the future beyond uh, uh, the mature economy. So it will be for around seven hours from 11 a.m. Singapore time. And our registration, of course, is completely free. So please uh, use the QR code that you could see in your screens right now to uh, see more info and register for the event. Okay, so we're looking forward to, for everyone's uh, participation as well in this conference because it's fully online. So if you have internet and the right, like you do right now, please uh, attend <laughs> and register. Okay, so thank you very much. And as per uh, protocol, oh wait, sorry. We do have a, a feedback form. Uh, again, hopefully everyone was uh, inspired by the talks that we had today, but we would also appreciate your feedback uh, regarding the info session today. So please uh, use the QR code again on the screen. And uh, also I think the link will be shared in a while. So earlier it was shared by Kim, uh, the form for application tech planter as well as the registration for HIC. And I think um, the link for the feedback form will be shared in a while as well. And as with any online event, of course, let's take a group photo. So for those who are uh, able to turn on their cameras. So please do so, so that we could take a few photos uh, with everyone. So thank you, everyone. And uh, okay, let me on spotlight our us so that we could have everyone on the screen. Okay, Michael, some is left. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for those, again, who can open the cameras, please do so. And uh, I'll be taking pictures on my end, though this is also a recording, but just in case. Okay, so for those who are here, please, one big smile. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, one more. Okay, I think there are more and more people opening their cameras right now. Okay, one more. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, one more page, I think. There we go. One, two, three, smile. Okay, perfect. So yeah, uh, that concludes our info session for Tech Planter today. I hope everyone was able to really fully understand uh, what Tech Planter is all about, um, the importance of our ecosystem and joining us. Of course, we're looking forward to support all of you. Uh, if you do apply, to, that's, why, that's why please do apply. <laughs> because yeah. As, a, as the first, the moment you apply to Tech Planter, you are, we, we'll make sure to give you all the support that we can, even if it's not via the demo day. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone. And uh, maybe have a good few hours left in your work day. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's like late afternoon, so yeah. So thank you everyone and take care. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Looking forward for your application. Yeah. yeah. Th we are thank you, thanking you ahead for your applications. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think I shall stop thank recording. You.